always state the assumption used in the treatment of benefits. And you will be correct. But if you choose to do something else without stating the reason why you use it, the examiner may mark you down or you will be wrong totally. That you'll be marked down or you'll be wrong totally in that case. So that is the idea about benefits. It could be discriminatory or non-discriminatory. If it is discriminatory to just a selected few of people directly stated in the question, include it. If it is not to specific people and he says it's available to all employees, thou shall not include. But if the examiner didn't tell you that uh, this is for selected few people or this is available to everybody, then whichever treatment you choose as a person preparing the tax liability of the individual, you shall state that assumption down. Any questions, please? All right. So like I mentioned, the meal allowance thing, the refund of medical expenses thing, it could be there in the question, but you must know whether it is discriminatory or non-discriminatory. If it is not clearly stated, state the assumption. Then the next question we ask ourselves is, okay, so how about bonus? Because in addition to the basic salary of people, they're going to get a bonus because bonus is part of the cash benefits or allowances that people get. So what is the tax principle about bonuses? So let's go. So this is the part of the discussion where we go to our principles document. Then I bring you up to speed with what we have there. So let me bring the principal document up. Okay, it's here. Don't worry about the max insight. I used it in the advanced taxation classroom. That's why you're seeing that. But I'm gonna clean this real quick. So let's look at bonuses. Please stay with me with the principal. Remember the principal is what we are interested in. So stay with me with the principal. Bonuses. And this is in your document, okay? The document you're supposed to download on page four. So when it comes to bonuses, what's the principle about bonuses? What's the principle? This is the principle about bonuses. Here you go. Here you go. Taxation of bonus is subject to the rule below. Any bonus up to 15% of the annual salary is taxed at 5% at source. So as far as your bonus is less than 15% of your basic salary, we don't include it in the chargeable income schedule we'll be preparing. Why? Because it will be taxed at source. 5%. Stay with me carefully. It is only the excess of the bonus above the 15% that will be included in the accessible income of the individual. So any amount in excess of the 15% of basic salary is included in the chargeable income. That is the rule about bonuses. Now, what, what the heck does that mean? This is what we're talking about. So let's say that example, we have our basic salary coming in for how much? Let's say $10,000, right? Then let's say that the individual receives a bonus. Let's say the bonus the individual got what's whatever, let's say 2,500. How should we treat this? 
Stay with me carefully here. So the first thing you need to ask yourself is, so treatment or bonus. The first thing you need to ask yourself is, okay, what is the 15% of uh, basic salary? So first 15% of the basic salary. Uh, no, I can't do dollar here. 10,000. That's going to be 1,000 watts, 500. So this first 15%, 1,500, shall be taxed at source at a rate of 5%. So withholding tax by the entity, they withhold this tax and remit it to the commissioner general. That's what we're talking about here. They will remit this tax and send it to the commissioner general. That's what we're talking about here. Now stay with me. But then what do we do then? So bonus receive is 2,500. Bonus subject to tax at 5% is 1,500. And that gives us the excess bonus. And that is what, 1,000. This excess bonus, 1,000 to be added to the chargeable income. This is what we mean by taxation of bonus. Any questions, please? Any questions, please? So that is the principle. And you must know this. It's not going to change. That is it. You must know it. Okay. Oh. So that's bonus. Then overtime. How do we deal with overtime? So let's look at it. So this was for bonus situation. And let's go to overtime. Now, the treatment of overtime is dependent on whether the employee is a junior staff or a senior staff. Very, very critical. So treatment of overtime is dependent on whether the person is a junior staff or a senior staff. Please stay with me carefully here so you don't get it twisted. When we say someone is a junior staff, what does that mean? It simply means that, so back to our principle, over time, here we are. A person is said to be a junior staff when the person's salary is 18000 a year or 1,500 a month. That's it. 18,000, so annual salary or income from employment is 1,000, 18,000 or 1,500 per month. That is who we call a junior staff. Please stay with me carefully here because this is where the bomb is about to drop. If that person is a junior staff, then how do we tax it? This is how we tax. Any overtime paid, any overtime paid, stay with me carefully, any overtime paid, that is 
below 15% of the salary of the individual shall be taxed at 5%. The excess of the fifteen, uh, the excess of the fifty percent shall be taxed at ten percent. So, if the person is a junior staff within this scheme, over time, that is less than fifty percent of the sal basic salary is taxed at five percent at source. Any excess is taxed at 10%. That's the rule. Any excess is taxed at 10%. That is the rule. But this is where you got to be careful. This is where you got to be careful. If the person is a senior staff, the law says that overtime shall not be paid to senior staff. For that reason, any overtime received by senior staff shall be included in their accessible income. So overtime received by senior staff shall be included in the chargeable income. That's the idea. That's the idea. Very critical, very important. Now, here is the catch. Here is the catch. If the person is labeled by the entity as a junior staff, stay with me carefully here. If the employee is labeled by the entity as a junior staff, however, the person's salary exceeds 18,000 CDs a year or, so per annum, or 1,500 per month, that person's overtime shall be taxed as though the person is a senior staff. So the fact that you have the label on you as a junior staff does not mean if your salary exceeds 18,000, we will charge you, we will tax you like a junior staff. No, it's like you are, you are a senior person because you are receiving more money. That's very critical. That is one trick you need to understand. So when a staff is labeled as a junior staff, but the basic salary of the staff exceeds 18,000 a year or 1,500 per month, overtime paid to such an employee shall be included in the chargeable income. Two, where a staff is labeled, so the employee is labeled as a senior staff. However, the basic salary is less than 18,000 CDs per annum or 1,500 per month. The fact that the person's salary is less than 18,000 does not mean we would charge the overtime or treat the overtime as a junior staff. No, the title senior staff means any bonus the person receives, or sorry, overtime the person receives shall be included in the chargeable income. Any questions about overtime? Any questions about overtime? Okay, oh, we good. That's nice. I love that. 